And this is the problem with a lot of our here helping of others. We need to first focus on things inside of ourselves. Now, if I am a good student of finding out what's inside of myself first... How, and how do you first get past <coughs> the fear and addictions to see really what your soul feels? Well, that's another question. Yes. Um, so let's answer we'll it. We'll get to that. No, no, let's answer it because yep. it's very important. Yeah. How do you get past... You, the question was how do you get past your addictions and your fears? Or feel it, yeah. The answer is you don't get past them. Mm. The only way to get into anything like, is to actually dive into them. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> now. now your addictions, uh, let's, let's look at the general way things happen in our, in our life. Our anger... Mm. Oops. is caused by our addictions not being met. So every time I'm angry, that tells me, mm, I've got an addiction that I desperately want met. So I need to be willing to find the addiction. How d and I've got to be willing not to pass it, not yes. to try to do this to it. Project. Not to try to go around it. But, go to but I need to feel my addiction. That's what I've been having trouble with. Does that make sense? Yes. It's actually very easy to feel your addictions because every time you get angry, you're already feeling an addiction. All right? It's actually very easy to feel your addiction. So let me give it maybe, uh, maybe, maybe an example. Um, I'm interacting with a person at work, right? And they treat me with no respect. That's what it feels like to me. And I'm an instantly angry with them. So what's that telling me? I have an addiction to be respected. And if somebody doesn't respect me, I punish them with my anger. Does that make sense? Mm. So I would then feel my addiction to be respected. So I could actually sit down and actually feel this feeling in me, how much I want every single person <laughs> to respect me. You know, that feeling that's there. I need to feel my anger with it first. I, I want every single person to respect me. If they don't respect me, then, you know, you can even express what you feel like doing. You know, like, I want to be in a rage with them. I want to just belt them or whatever it is that you feel, right? You are now feeling the anger that cause, that is caused by the addiction not being met. Then when you start to get a bit deeper into that, you'll start even feeling the addiction itself. I desperately want everybody to respect me. And now that your anger is gone, you won't feel it angrily anymore. You'll feel it like, I've just got this, like, give me the drug of respect type feeling inside of me. Does that make sense? That's the feeling of, like, the same feeling that many alcoholics express when they want a drink. It's the same kind of emotion. Not towards a drink, but towards the feeling of respect. And so what they have is they, you then feel how much you want everybody to respect you. And then you'll start feeling your fears associated with disrespect. And when, I, when you start getting to that, you'll start feeling like, I'm terrified if I'm not respected, what people are going to do to my life. How they might attack me, how they might denigrate me, how they might pull me down and ridicule me and make fun of me. And there'll even be childhood events in your life that you will actually start remembering then of all the times when somebody didn't respect you and how you were made fun of at school and how dad made fun of you and how mum made fun of you and all those kind of things. Does that make sense? So that's now connecting emotionally. That's really good. So now we're in this mode of feeling how terrified we are of being disrespected. And then underneath those fears, we're now, can you see, I'm just talking about it and you're already there now. <laughs> you're already touching that now. So we started from this angry feeling that I expressed. We see the addiction and feel the addiction. And then we've gone into the fear of what the addiction is covering over, which is all of this hurt feelings that you have, afraid, afraid of that means you're no good and it means that you're useless if they don't respect you and all those kind of things. And now all of a sudden we're starting to feel some of the grief. And that's how we get to feel 
and release the cause of the creation. What if you're having trouble learning from it and you keep going in circles? Uh, usually we keep going in circles for one reason only. And you know what that is? We don't want to feel them. We don't want to feel our fears, how terrified we are. Huh? And so what happens for most people is they either cy they cycle between these two locations. They create a whole world of their entire life that just keeps them bound in this area here. They don't want to feel their fear and so what they do is they want their addiction met every single time. And so any person who, makes, who gives them respect, they love them. Any person who disrespects them, they create an entire life where they don't even have to see them again. Right? You don't even have to even spend any time with them anymore. You don't even have to notice them. You, don't, you make out they're not even alive. That's how it feels inside of yourself. Because you want the addiction met of respect in this case that we're giving. And that's because we don't want to touch the fear. So any time you feel blocked towards doing something is because you want the addiction so badly because you don't want to feel the terror which, so much. Which is unloving to yourself or to someone else? Of course, it's always unloving. Every time we go for the addiction, it's always going to be unloving firstly to ourselves because the most loving thing to ourselves is to feel this. Because if we felt this and released this, the grief associated with all these fears, then we'd no longer have the fears or the grief and we'd be healed. Right? So that's the most loving thing we can do for ourselves. And the most loving thing we can do for everybody else is the same. Because while we hold on to this grief and feel afraid of it, we're going to unfortunately abuse all of our relationships by getting the addiction met. Yep. Yeah, Mary? I just wanted to um, share something that really has helped me with this process. Yep. And that is um, something that I kind of went through and then you said about two sentences about it and I went, that's what actually I learned. Yep. <laughs> and it was, um, sorry, i just got to keep it in the <laughs> frame. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was that emotion is on top of another emotion and thought is on top of another thought. And I just wondered if you would mind explaining that. Explaining that. that. Yeah, yeah let's because do that. that was very powerful for me to... Yeah, there's a basic uh, misunderstanding that most people have about dealing with their emotions and and it is this basic thing that I remind Mary of at times and I r always remind myself of with regard to my own emotions as well. Thoughts are only on top of other thoughts. In other words, you cannot release an emotion by thinking a thought because it's only on top of another thought. The actual thing that's on top of another emotion is an emotion. So the only way I can release this emotion, whatever this emotion is, is by firstly being prepared to release this emotion to actually feel and go through the emotion. I can't do it by thinking a thought. I can only feel the emotion. 